Let's talk about heat and thermodynamics. Everyone has a pretty decent grasp of the general concepts of heat and temperature. Things like fire and stoves have high temperatures, so they're hot to be near. Things like snow and ice have low temperatures, so they're cold to the touch. Most everyday objects, like tables and chairs, are somewhere in between. A photo of myself would be considered hot too, though for different reasons. All of these statements are pretty basic and commonly understood, but for the purpose of science, we'll need a more specific way to define, measure, and quantify heat. Nowadays, it's well understood among scientists that, on a fundamental level, the heat of an object comes from the fact that the molecules that make it up are constantly moving around, with some amount of kinetic energy. The more kinetic energy that these molecules have, the warmer the material is. This explanation is nice and all, but it's also very microscopic, small-scale, and complex. Since the behavior of molecules is something that can't exactly be easily observed by an everyday layperson, let's try to find a larger scale or macroscopic way of observing heat-related behaviors. Take heat transfer, for example. If you heat up a stovetop and place a metal pot onto it, heat transfers from the stove to the pot. The microscopic reason for this is that the stovetop's molecules are excited and moving quickly, bumping into the slower molecules of the cold pot and causing them to accelerate. The more macroscopic explanation for this, however, is simply to say that the heat transfers to the pot because heat tends to transfer from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. Just to be clear, this second statement isn't wrong or necessarily less accurate than the first statement, it's just slightly more useful for the majority of observable cases, since it's not always important to clarify the behaviors of molecules when talking about everyday experiences. Let's talk a little more about heat transfer, though. This transfer of heat is the reason why, if you hold a pile of snow with your bare hands in the winter, you can feel your hands start to get cold as the snow melts. Heat is leaving your hands, causing them to feel colder, and entering the snow, warming it up and melting it. What's especially important to understand is that as the temperature of your hand lowers, the temperature of the snow increases, and the two temperatures approach each other until a point is reached where the temperatures are roughly equal and heat won't transfer anymore. When this point occurs, the system has reached a state called thermal equilibrium. The word thermal comes from the Greek word for heat. As another everyday example, imagine a cup of cold water in a room. Over time, the water loses its coldness as the heat from its environment enters the cup. Thermal equilibrium in this case is when the water in the cup reaches room temperature and won't naturally heat up anymore. In this case, the surroundings technically should have gotten slightly colder, as some of its heat has been lost to the water, but you probably won't notice this in most cases. This idea of heat transfer is what allows us to make more specific measurements. Familiar devices called thermometers are used to measure heat, since when heat is transferred to them, the fluid material inside begins to expand and travel up these tubes. When the thermometer reaches equilibrium with whatever it's making contact with, the length of the column will presumably rest at some point, allowing us to get an idea of how much heat was transferred into it. Measuring the precise temperature at that point is simply a matter of choosing what scale to use. Conversely, there are also ways in which we can limit the transfer of heat with the right material. Different materials are influenced by heat at different rates, so while some objects will heat up very quickly when exposed to heat, others are considered insulators, meaning that heat will transfer through them very slowly. A cooler is a good example of this. Coolers usually have their walls packed with hard, dense foam, which is a good insulator and will prevent heat from getting in, keeping your food cold. It's worth noting, however, that while an ideal insulator is one that will never allow any transfer of heat, it's still only an idealization, and one we use when making models or solving basic problems. No such insulator exists in reality, and even the inside of a cooler will warm up eventually. So, the next time you're out in the woods, keep in mind that your camping buddy will one day betray you. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. If you have a request for a future video, comments will work there, but I've also got a Discord server linked in the description, so all are welcome there. 
and if you'd like to support this channel and help me make more of these in general, feel free to check out some of my other videos on this channel, as well as the ones I've got coming in the future. So that's all for now, and have a nice day.